Hi everybody, in today's video we will explore two additional data sources, Dataverse for Teams and SharePoint Online. We will basically review the same application that we built and we reviewed it in the, in the previous video, but this time using these two data sources. So you will be able to compare, for example, which functions and operations are delegable to those two data sources. So let's start with this video. Okay, so in this video, we are gonna we are gonna compare two additional data sources. We are gonna compare Dataverse for Teams and SharePoint as an alternative to SQL or Dataverse. What we see here is a, an application that I have built using Dataverse for Teams. As you may have heard, Dataverse for Teams is a lightweight version of Dataverse. It's, a, it's an alternative to Dataverse, so if you don't want to pay for premium licenses and, and you're a citizen developer building a small business productivity solution, this is a perfect alternative to quickly build your application. You will see that the, the way of creating a Canvas app is very similar. You can create here very quickly and easily your uh, tables, the, your relationships, even your views, and you can uh, in the same way create your screens and, and uh, this functionality. What I'm gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna show you this application that I, it's the same application yeah, yes, here in the browser. And let's explore the functionality. Something that is gonna be really interesting based on the, on the test that I did is that all the functionality that we have, have explored in the application that we build with data Metaverse is going to be the same. We are going to be able to use the same filters, the same operators. We are going to be able to delegate all of those functions, expressions and operators to Dataverse for Teams. So those are great news. Obviously, there are going to be some limitations. For example, uh, as you know, Dataverse for Teams only can store up to two gigabytes of content or up to one million records. And it has a difference between, for example, something specific and important features like, for example, the security functionalities or feature, auditing features. So again, even when most of that or all of the delegable functions are the same in Dataverse and in Dataverse for Teams, Dataverse for Teams should be used more for specific small productivity solutions or, or Teams projects that don't require complex scenarios or integration. Now, just let me show you how this is. This works right for example I can filter by category I can also filter by uh, let's say for example label let's say intermediate right and it's gonna apply multiple multiple filters at the same time right the controls are, are kind of different as you can see here I need to remove the text to basically clear all the filters but but actually it's going to be easy to manage obviously there are also some difference between the uh, uh, canvas app and uh, power apps application created from teams right because we don't have all the same controls so we have some limitations there as well but in terms of uh, filters and, and functionalities here you will see that all of these functions are del are delegable if we go to my application you will see that there are no dele delegation warnings right actually if we go to all my we only are gonna have delegation warnings in the operate operator filters screen which basically is when we use some uh, specific expression for example in this case where we multiply the uh, unit price with the number of, of seats to get the potential deal size but that's the same experience that we had with Dataverse, right yes let's continue applying the filters so for example let's say i want to filter by bi and again it's gonna it's gonna work the same functions like max mean average and sum are gonna work for the numeric example right we can filter by numbers so for example let's say total numbers 20 or is not 20 or is less than or equal to or is greater than, greater than or equal to is gonna work it's gonna be exactly the same in the case of text it, the same filters are, are gonna are gonna work in the same way with it for example just to give you a quick example let's say start with agile right 
and it's gonna work as it did works in in the dataverse example search as well is gonna work for example in this in this case i am searching by the description field and i have this word canvas right so i can filter by canvas and it's gonna work right and date filters as well is gonna work in in the same way so let me see if we can apply other range for the start date it's, it's perfect and uh, again the only warning is in the case of the operate these operators filter which if you remember is the same case as in the example where i use the full version of dataverse right Perfect. Now let's compare this with another data source, which is the case of SharePoint. Now SharePoint has more limitations in terms of delegation. Before doing that, let me show you the documentation. If we go to SharePoint and we go to the legable functions, you will see that we can delegate various functions, but there are some specific functions, important functions like search that if we compare to, for example, SQL, right? Let's go to SQL. Uh, we won't be able to use the search function, we won't be able to use in. We can use, for example, ends with, uh, or we can use other interesting uh, filters and I'm gonna show you in a, in a minute, right? So let me come back here to our Power Apps application. Perfect. So let's see what it works without delegation warning and what does, doesn't work. So what it's gonna work, for example, in the home screen is all of these filters, right? For example, I can filter by categories. It's gonna be the same case as, um, as in, in the other data sources. We can filter by, by language, by professor. For example, let's select Juan and let's select level beginner and let's select modality in person, for example, right? So all of those filters are gonna work without any problem. But when we want to apply a filter by course name is where we are going to get basically a delegation warning. Why? Because let, let me show you the following. If we go to the function and again, I'm going to explain how I have applied these filters in, a, in an upcoming video. If we use this particular expression in, for example, we will receive that warning that says that the highlighted part of this formula may not work correctly with column title on large data sets. Why is that? Because if we look at the documentation, in is not a delegable operator. What that means is that if in case we have an application that have more than 500 items by default or 2000 items, depending on how I, how I basically uh, configure my application, because remember that you can increase the number of items that can be processed by the front end to up to 2,000, right? So only in those cases, application is, is gonna work without any problem. But if I have more than 2,000 items, let's say that's, that, that's the case, I'm gonna have the, uh, a delegation issue. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be able to process, for example, this particular expression. So that's, that's gonna be a, a problem. So we should avoid to use this type of uh, specific operators if we use SharePoint online, online unless we, we are sure that our application is not gonna have more than 2,000 items. Now, let's explore the other functionality. For example, a good news is that we can filter by number uh, and all of these expressions are gonna work without any problem. All of those are delegable operators or it's gonna, it's gonna work okay. For example, let's, let's do the same as example as we did in the other data sources. It's gonna work without any problem, so that's that's great news. Now let's go to, for example, search. Search is not a delegable function. Let's look that in, in the documentation. It's not a delegable function, so this is not gonna work, unfortunately. Okay, so uh, don't use a search uh, function. Let me show you that. We have the warning here. If we want to, to use the search function, we are gonna have the delegation warning. So don't use the, don't use search if you're using SharePoint as a, as a data source. You can use the other type of filters like within the home screen, for example. If we go to date, a date is gonna work. That's also great news. And this is because if we look at the documentation, we can filter, we can use the filter function 
by daytime. So this is gonna work without any problem. And if we go to text, some of the expressions are gonna work, but some, o some others are not because uh, we're gonna get delegation warnings. For example, when, if, we, if we use in, if we use the end suite, or if we use not, those are not gonna work. But l let's explore what op options are gonna work. For example, is, it's gonna work, right? Because uh, we use basically equal, right? So for example, if course name is, let's see a real example here, Power Apps Training, Power Apps Training. Remember that it, it needs to be exactly the same value. Contains is not going to work. Contains is basically going to use this expression the in, and uh, in is not delegable to SharePoint. Does not contain is not going to work because we are using the not expression, right? It starts with, it's going to work, right? That's, that's... Uh, 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 good news, we can use start with. We can use end with, it's not delegable. And we can use empty, it's empty. If the value is empty, it's gonna work. Uh, it's not empty, it's not gonna work because it's not delegable, right? Uh, now, it's important to understand that, again, if we have less than 2000 items, those functions and those expressions are gonna work without any problem. The problem is if we have more than 2000 items. So just to give you an example, if I want to use contains with what we know is, is not delegable, what is going to happen is that uh, the Canvas app in the front end is going to process, it's going to get that uh, all the items and it's going to process the query in the front end. So for example, let's say I want to use databases. It's working. Actually, it's working. It's getting the values. However, this, is, this processing is happening in the front end. It's not happening in in the backend so you could have some performance issues or you can have issues if you have more than 2019 uh, you will see those warnings here highlighted in in blue so in this way it's gonna be easy easier for you to understand for example which expressions works and which expressions are not gonna work so again Recommendation, don't use non-delegable functions. Use delegable function as much as you can, unless you can confirm that your application more, is not gonna have more than 2009. Another important recommendation in the case, in the particular case of SharePoint, is that even if you can, if you can use delegable functions to SharePoint, you have also some specific limitations in the backend. For example, SharePoint by default can process up to 5,000 items at the same time, right? So in order to don't have any problem in case you have more than 5,000 items, it's important that you configure indices in your SharePoint list. So you should, you should select some specific fields uh, and configure those as an index so you won't have problems delegating those specific queries. Now, if we compare obviously SharePoint as a data source versus Dataverse uh, for Teams, right? You will see that Dataverse for Teams is a better option when you want to, for example, create tables that have relationships or that have more complex, for example, functions and operations because most of the functions are delegable to Dataverse, right? However, you will have some limitations in, in comparison to SharePoint. For example, a Power Apps, and a, a Power Apps application that have been created between Power Apps using Dataverse for Teams won't be able to be embedded in a SharePoint online site, for example, right? Or won't be able to be embedded in a Power BI report. So those are some specific functionalities that Dataverse for Teams doesn't have by now, right? Also, some interesting things is that if you explore this application and if you want to use some a specific control, you will see that Power Apps for Teams has a, a, a limited set of, of controls and functionality. If instead, if you use a, if you create a Power Apps Canvas app that uses SharePoint Online as the, your data source, you have the full functionality available in, in Power Apps Canvas App Studio. So in summary, the four options are valid options, but again, it depends on your use case, right? I would recommend to use the solution that is more appropriate to your use case. Okay, guys, that was all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video. In our next video, we're going to see how did I build the Power Apps application using SQL Azure as a data source. See you in the next video.